Hey everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Alex. I'm a Google developer expert for Firebase and I'm gonna show you in this video how to implement pagination in Firestore using Jetpack Compose. This is a video for an article that I wrote. Link is in the description below which was recently published on the Firebase tips and tricks publication on Medium. So let's begin. As you already know when we are dealing with a large amount of data it's already known that we can cannot read all the data at once. Why? Because it will take an enormous amount of time only to download it. If the data doesn't fit into the memory, an out of memory error might also be thrown. From the user perspective, I'm also sure that nobody will be ever interested in reading so much information. Besides that, when it comes to Cloud Firestore, everything is about the number of reads and writes we perform. So it won't be feasible to read all the documents that exist in a collection. So the best solution that we have is to paginate the data by getting it progressively in smaller chunks. Let me show you guys how this application looks like. So let me launch it. And as you can see, we have a list of products. We can navigate to the product details to see the detail of each product. And besides that, we can also navigate back to the initial list. So I'll try to explain in this article how the paging tree library works with Cloud Firestore. I will use the MVVM architecture pattern with flow and view model. For the asynchronous call to Firestore, I will use Kotlin security. For dependency injection, I will use Hilt. And for the UI, I'll use Jetpack Compose. If you are interested in the all day of paginating the data using a recycler review and an adapter, please check this article, which is called How to Paginate Firestore Using Paging Tree on Android. To see how the Paging Tree library works with Jetpack Compose, we'll create a very simple application with only two screens. In one, we'll display some products that exist in a Firestore collection, as you already seen, and in the other one, we'll display the product details. This is the products collection in our database. As you can see in the database schema, each document within this collection is a product object. Here is the corresponding data class. So how can you paginate the products in clean architecture? If you read some of my latest article, you're probably already familiar with the fact that I'm a fan of the MVVM architecture path. That being said, the code in the project is divided in three separate layers, the data layer, the domain layer, and the presentation layer. When talking about the data layer, because it's a very simple application, it only contains two classes. The first one is called Firestore Paging Source, where we set up a stream of page data from Firestore. This also be called our network data source. Our intention is to propagate the queries results to the product screen. As you can see, this class includes a suspend load function, which is especially overridden to indicate how to retrieve the page data from Firestore. So I created this class to directly use Kotlin score routine for our asynchronous data loading. Please also note that the load params object that is received as an argument contains the result of the load operation. The load function returns an object of type load result, which is a seal class that takes the form of load result page if the load is successful or load result error if the load fails. And the second class is called product repository implementation where we inject in the construction the Firestore paging source object and the paging config object in order to set up the pager object and return a flow. Here we set up a stream of paging data. The pager class contains function that expose the stream of paging data objects from the paging source. When we create a new instance of the pager class, it's mandatory to provide an object of type paging config to tell the pager how to load the data. In this example, I have added in the app module class the creation of the corresponding object. I have set an additional property called page size, which is set to 10. But there are also other properties like initial load size or prefetch distance. Since we are using in this project use cases, in the use case package inside the domain layer, we have added a use case object for the read operation. This operation is present inside the use cases class as you see. And here is the corresponding get products class. But why do we do that? 
simply to be able to inject an instance of the use cases class inside the product view model class constructor. One more thing to note is the cached in function is responsible for the data stream to be shareable. Besides that, we can always use already cached products. This example uses the view model scope that is provided by the life cycles view model KTX dependency. The mechanism is quite simple. The pager object that was earlier created called the load function from the Firestore paging source class by providing the load params object and receiving back a load result object. Going forward the presentation layer, inside it we can find the main activity where we create the nav graph. Inside this composable function we create the nav controller and set the nav host. To be able to pass a product object from one screen to another, we need to convert the object into the JSON. This operation is needed because we cannot simply pass a serializable object to nav arguments. It has to be a string. Besides the activity, there are also two more UI related packages. One package for each screen. Inside the products package, we can find the product screen. In Jetpack Compose, we have lazy column and lazy row as a substitute for recycler view to display a list of data. So I have simply used the first one. As you can see, we have the possibility to display the loading state. The loading state can be either load state loading if there is an active load operation or loading state error if there is an error. For simplicity, I have implemented in this example only these two, but in a real world project, I will encourage you to implement load state not loading as well. Inside the product package, we can find the product screen. Since the start destination in the NAFHOFS is the product screen, when we click on a specific product, we navigate further to the product screen to see the corresponding details. To keep things simple, I have only created a column with the text for two fields, the name and the price. When we launch the app, the progress bar is displayed twice. Since we load the data in chunks of 10 items, the progress bar is displayed for the first 10 products. Since all the products are visible on the screen, another call to fast to replace form to get the next 10 products. Hence the second display of the progress bar. Please also note that when we hit back and we navigate from the product details back to the product screen, see, the position is maintained. It's really helpful because we can continue to scroll from the last visited product. In conclusion, that's the simple solution for implementing pagination in Cloud Firestore using a clean architecture and Jetpack Compose. The new paging library is much easier to use and implement and works pretty well with Cloud Firestore. So I hope you find this article useful and if you have any questions regarding the topic, please feel free and leave a comment in the section below. So in the end guys, you can check the entire article on Medium and if you enjoyed this video, Video, please hit the like button. But if you think you learned something new, please subscribe to my channel as you already know more videos are coming. Bye!